Hi everyone, it's Professor Fermerton. In this video, we're going to talk about differentials and increments. In this section, we're going to talk about increments, which are very useful in providing an alternative notation for defining the derivative. And we're also going to find out that differentials are easier to calculate or compute, and they can be used to approximate increments. So in this video, we're going to talk about understanding and evaluating increments, and also differentials, and then use differentials to find approximations for increments. So let's start off with increments. Recall that from algebra class, there's a formula for calculating the slope of a line that passes through two points. So x1, y1, x2, y2 are your two points that are on the line. And you want to calculate the vertical change and the horizontal change. Now, we're going to talk about how does increments relate with the slope of a line. Well, the numerator for the slope formula we know is y2 subtract y1. Or you may have seen this symbol earlier. It's delta y. That means the change in the y values. You may also think of it as the rise. How much does the line rise between the two points? But in terms of the increments, delta y is what's called the increment of y. It tells you how much do the y values differ from one another. And on the other hand, the denominator for the slope formula is x2 subtract x1, or it's delta x. Delta x means the change in the x coordinates, or x values. You may also think of the slope as the run in the denominator. It tells you how much does the graph go from left to right between the two points. The denominator, the delta x, is what's called the increment of x. So if you take these two points, p, x1, y1, and q is x2, y2, on the graph of y equals f of x, if you connect these two points with a line, we know that that's called the secant line. And let's look at the graph. So you have this point p, that's x1, y1, and this point q, x2, y2. You connect them with a line that's called the secant line. And earlier in the course, we calculated the slope of the secant line using the average rate of change. The difference in the x values between p and this point q, that's called the run, or the increment in x, and the difference between the y values between the two points, this is what's called the increment in y, or the rise. So remember that you can calculate the slope of the secant line, which was called average rate of change, but it has to be over a closed interval. And this closed interval is starting at x1, and it ends at x2. All right, increments. The change in the x is called the increment of x, and it's denoted as delta x, or change in x. This symbol is the uppercase Greek letter delta, so it means change. And so delta x is the increment in x. It's just the difference between the x values. Your ending value in the closed interval subtract the starting value in the closed interval, so x2 minus x1. On the other hand, the change in the y values is called the increment of y, and it's denoted as delta y. So the delta y is the change in the y values, or the rise. Delta y is y2 subtract y1, and it tells you the distance between the y values that are between the two points. So in the next example, we're going to find out what are the increments delta x and delta y for a function to better understand the relationship between increments and the slope of a secant line between two points on the graph. So example one, increments. Find the increments delta x and delta y, given that x of 1 is negative 2, and x sub 2 is equal to 3, and the function is this rational function, f of x equals 5x plus 1 in the numerator, 2x minus 5 in the denominator. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the increment in x. Notice that we have x1 and x2, so we have all the information we need to calculate the run, or delta x. Delta x is the increment of x. x2 subtract x1 is 3, subtract negative 2, and that's 5. So the x values change by 5 units between x1 and x2. Now you might be wondering, I have the x-coordinates for my two points on the line, but I don't have the y-coordinates. Well, you need to use the function to calculate y1 and y2. So delta y we know is y2 minus y1. The y2 is the y-coordinate when you plug in x2 into the function. And same thing for y1. It's the y-coordinate when you plug in x1 into the function. So f of x2 would be f of 3. Subtract f of x1, that would be f of negative 2. So let's find out what the y-values are. So if you plug in 3 into the function, the rational function we were given, you get 5 plus 3 in the numerator, and 2 times 3 subtract 5 in the denominator. If you calculate this, you'll get 16. So the y value at x2 equals 3 is 16. So that's your y2. And then your y1 is calculating f of negative 2. So if you plug negative 2 in, you'll get 5 times negative 2 plus 1. And then in the denominator, you'll have 2 times negative 2 minus 5. And that comes out to be 1. So your y1 is 1 when you plug in x1. So if you calculate the increment in y, the y2 minus y1, you'll get 16 minus 1 or 15. The y values change by 15 units between y1 and y2.
So the previous problem gave us an idea of how to calculate increments. Okay, it's just the numerator and the denominator for the average rate of change or the slope of the secant line. Now we're going to talk about differentials. On the graph y equals f of x, let's keep the point p as a fixed point. So in other words, we've talked about this before. The point p does not move. It's fixed. So this is point p. And you have this point q on the graph. And you're going to move the point q towards the fixed point p. So just like we talked about with the tangent line problem. We were taking the slopes of all the secant lines, and we use a limit process to calculate what was the slope of the tangent line. So take this point Q that's on the curve. You construct a line between P and Q, and that was called the secant line. And now you're going to move the point Q closer and closer to point P by moving the Q along the curve. So if you calculate the slope of this line, you get the slope of the secant line. And we know if we move Q closer and closer to P, then all the secant lines will get closer to the tangent line. And so the slope of the secant line will get closer and closer to the slope of the tangent line. What this means is that we can actually approximate the slope of the secant line by the derivative of the function, because we know the derivative gives us the slope of the tangent line. So in other words, we can write this, delta y divided by delta x, that's the average rate of change or slope of the secant line. So it's the change in the y values divided by the change in the x's. The slope of the secant line is approximately the derivative of the function evaluated at x. So how does this help us calculate what's called differentials? So you multiply both sides of the equation or this expression by delta x, which is the denominator. So that way you will clear out the denominator. When you do that, you'll have delta y on one side. And on the other side of the equation, you'll have f prime of x is times delta x. So in other words, the change in the y values is approximately the change in the x values times the derivative of f evaluated at x. So since the points p and q are really close to one another, their difference is basically really, really small. So since delta x is very small, that means the quantity f prime of x times delta x is called the differential and is represented using the symbol dy. So dy is equal to the derivative evaluated at x times the change in the x values. So let's see what happens if you have the function y equals f of x, which is equal to x. So if f of x is equal to x, so a nice linear function of slope 1 that passes through the origin, we know the derivative of f of x is 1 because you can use the power rule. The power goes to the front, you subtract 1 from the power, you'll get, end up getting x to the 0, which is just 1. So let's see what we get when we plug this into this formula now. dy is equal to f prime of x times delta x dy is equal to f prime of x times dx. And then that means dy is equal to 1 times dx. And that means dy is equal to dx. In other words, it tells us if the x values change by a certain amount, the y values change by the same amount. And we know that because y equals x in this function. Whatever the x values change by, the y values change by the same amount. So we got the same information using what's called differentials. So let's talk about the definition of differentials. If y equals f of x is a differentiable function, so that means you can take the derivative or find the derivative of f of x, the differential dy, or sometimes you might see it as df, it's defined using this formula. The differential of y dy is equal to f prime of x times dx, where we know that dx and delta x are the same. So this means delta y is the exact change in the y values. So if you want to calculate what is the exact change in the y values between two points, you find the rise or the change in the y values. But this formula says you can use the derivative to approximate how much the y values change, which might be a little bit faster. So dy is the approximate change in the y values. And this approximation should be really close to the actual change or the exact change. The differential dy is a good approximation for delta y as long as delta x is close to zero. In other words, if you have two points on the line, if the two points are really close to one another, delta x will be really close to zero, and that means your dy, the differential, will be a good approximation for the actual change or the exact change in the y values. To be able to understand this, let's look at the graph. So let's visualize the difference between increments and differentials now. So you have the same graph as we had before. You have these two points, which one point is called P and the other one's going to be called Q. 
One is at x1, y1. The other one's at x2, y2. If you calculate the difference between the y values, you would take y2, subtract y1, and that is the actual change between the y values. It's the exact change between the y values. How much does the graph rise between point P and point Q? But with differentials, you use the derivative, or we know the derivative is related with the slope of the tangent line, to approximate the change in the y values. So what you do is you take this point P, which is fixed. It's at x1, y1. You calculate how much do the y values change between this point P and a point that's on the tangent line. If this point Q is really, really close to P, then the change in the x is equal to dx. And so this approximate change is calculated as the differential dy. So again, notice that if the line that connects the points P and Q is the secant line, it determines the increments delta x and delta y. Delta x is the actual change between the two points in terms of x coordinates, and the delta y is the actual change between the y values be between the two points. But the line that passes through this fixed point P and the tangent line to the curve determines the values for the differential dy. To help explain what this all means, let's look at example two, differentials. Find the differential dy for the function y equals f of x equals this polynomial function, 3x to the fourth subtract 6x squared plus seven. We know the differential dy is by definition this, using this formula, dy equals f prime of x, the derivative of f, times this differential dx. So let's look at the function. f of x was 3x to the fourth subtract 6x squared plus seven. Find the derivative. So use the power rule, sum and difference rule, and constant multiple property. You keep the constant three, but you bring the exponent down and you multiply, so that gives you 12. And then you subtract one from the exponent, so that will give you 12x cubed for the first term's derivative. The second term, you keep the six, but you bring down the exponent using the power rule, so you'll get two times six, or 12, and you'll have x to the two minus one, which is just x to the first power. And we know the derivative of seven is zero. So the derivative is 12x cubed, subtract 12x. And now notice that each term has a 12x in common, so you can factor it out. So the derivative is 12x times, you'll have an x squared left from the first term, and you'll have a one left over from the second term because you're factoring out all of the second term. And now x squared subtract one, that's a difference of squares. It's x squared subtract one squared. So it factors. So 12x was the GCF or greatest common factor. x squared minus one factors as x plus one, x minus one. So now going back to the formula to calculate the differential, dy is the derivative times dx. It's 12x times x plus one times x minus one times dx. That's how you calculate the differential. The differential is the derivative times dx. Okay, example three, we're going to understand the difference between calculating differentials and increments for a function. So example three, comparing increments and differentials. Find the differential dy and the increment delta y for the function y equals f of x equals x minus five in parentheses squared when x equals two and dx, which is equal to delta x, is negative 0.3. So before we start this example, we're gonna explain what is this actually asking us to do. It wants us to calculate what is the actual change in the y values when the x values change by negative 0.3. Between x1 and x2, the x values change by negative 0.3, or negative 3 tenths, when you start at x equals two. So let's start off with the increment in y. We know that delta y is f of x2 minus f of x1, or y2 minus y1. It's the rise between the two points on your graph. Well, notice that we only have one x value. We have x equals two given in the problem, but since we know that the change is negative 0.3, we can find out x2. So x1 is two. Now, if the change is negative 0.3, that means x2 is, take the x equals two that you start off with and change it by the delta x. So that means the other point is at 1.7. x1 is two and x2 is 1.7. It's 0.3 units to the left of x1 equals two because the change is negative. So now that we have the x coordinates, we can actually calculate the y coordinates to find out the actual change in the y values. So f of x1 is f of two. Now plug in two into the original function. You get two subtract five in parentheses. That's all squared. So negative three squared gives you positive nine. And then f of x2 was f of 1.7. So if you plug 1.7 into the function, 
Do I have 1.7 subtract 5? All squared, which is negative 3.3 .3 all squared, which will give you 10.89. So this means the exact change or the actual change in the y values is the increment of y. So delta y is 10.89 subtract 9, or the y values change by 1.89 units between the two points that's on the curve. Now let's compare this with what's called the differential of y. So the differential of y is denoted as dy, and it can be calculated using this formula. dy is equal to f prime of x times dx. So if we want to calculate the derivative of f, we need to actually simplify the function first. So notice that you have x minus 5 all to the second power for the original function. Let's see what you actually get if you multiply it out. x minus 5 squared is x minus 5 times x minus 5. And if you use the foil, you'll have x squared minus 5x, another negative 5x, so you have negative 10x. And then negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. And so now you can calculate the derivative. So the derivative of this function is, use the power rule to take the derivative of x squared, you'll get 2x. And the derivative of negative 10x, we know will be negative 10. And the derivative of 25 is a constant, so the derivative is 0. So f prime of x is 2x minus 10. Let's plug everything we know into the formula for the differential, dy. dy is f prime of x dx. You can replace the derivative with 2x minus 10 in parentheses. So the differential is 2x minus 10 times dx, we were told, is delta x. So replace dx with negative 0.3. So the x values change by negative 0.3 units. Now we're going to use the tangent line to approximate the differential. The only x value that we were given in the problem is 2. So let's find out what is the tangent line's approximation, or what's the slope of the tangent line at x equals 2. So if you plug 2 into the derivative, you'll have 2 times 2 minus 10. That's negative 6. So the slope of the tangent line is negative 6 at x equals 2. And if you multiply that by the differential dx, you get 1.8. So that's what's called the differential of y. You've calculated the approximation of the difference between the y values using the derivative and the slope of the tangent line. Notice that these two are very similar. The differential is 1.8. That's an approximation. And the delta y is the actual change between the y values. It was 1.89. These two are not very far apart. So in other words, we can use the tangent line slope to approximate the change in the y values very quickly. Sometimes calculating the y values takes more time than it actually takes to calculate the derivative and evaluate the derivative to find the slope of the tangent line. And so now that we know the difference between increments and differentials, let's talk about the last example with an application involving differentials. Example four, application of medicine. Suppose that a drug is given to a patient to dilate their arteries, increase from 2 to 2.1 millimeters, use differential approximations to determine how much the cross-sectional area increased. So this figure gives you an idea what the cross-sectional area looks like for an artery. It looks more like an oval. So since the cross-section is approximately a circle, we're going to assume that, you can use the function a equals pi r squared to find out what is the change in the cross-sectional area, because that's what we're trying to find. Use differentials to approximate how much the cross-sectional area changes. So our function is a equals pi r squared. The variable is r. The output is the area a. So you can think of this as a is the function like f, and the variable is r like x. So a of r is pi r squared. So the variable is representing the radius of the artery. We're going to approximate using differentials. So the differential was this formula involving dx and dy. dy was f prime of x times dx. But this time we want to calculate the differential for area in terms of radius. So dA instead of dy equals the derivative of the function a evaluated at r for the radius times dr instead of dx. So notice in the problem that the actual change in the radius of the artery increased from 2 to 2.1 millimeters. So we can calculate delta r or dr. Delta r, which is equal to dr, 2.1 to track 2, so the artery expanded by 0.1 millimeters. And so now we also need to calculate the derivative. So if a of r is pi r squared, that's your original function, what's the derivative? r squared is the power function, and the pi is a constant. So you keep the pi in the derivative, and what's the derivative of x squared? It's 2x. So the derivative of r squared is 2r.
So the derivative is 2 pi r. So let's plug everything in into what we have for the differential. So dA is the derivative of a at r, so 2 pi r, times dr. We know that dr is 0.1 millimeters, so replace that. So the last thing that we need to do is just calculate what is the slope of the tangent line when the radius was originally 2 millimeters. So in the derivative, evaluate the derivative at when the radius was originally 2 millimeters. So 2 times pi times 2 times 0.1, that's approximately, if you round the two decimal places, 1.26. And since this is representing the change in the area, it's square millimeters or millimeters squared. So this means the approximation to the change in the cross-sectional area is about 1.26 millimeters squared. So what does this all mean? That means if the drug was administered to the patient to expand the artery's radius, the radius of the artery went from 2 millimeters to 2.1 millimeters, that will affect the cross-sectional area of how much blood will actually flow through the artery. The cross-sectional area of the artery will increase by about 1.26 millimeters squared. So this finishes our video on increments and differentials. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about marginal analysis that you encounter in business and economics.